say hello to the brand new 2021 Specialized Diverge, a bike for grinding gravel and going adventuring in the middle of nowhere. Specialized says this new bike is the ultimate getaway vehicle and with speed, control and confidence, Diverge is the most capable gravel bike ever made. Their words, not mine. So in this video, I'll go into all the details of the new bike and give my opinion on the new bike. But before we dive in, a quick history lesson on the Diverge. Specialized was actually an early adopter of the gravel bike. It first launched the original Diverge back in 2014, a road bike that borrowed tech from man's bikes, but the main difference was bigger tire clearance and a modified geometry. Generation two Diverge arrived in 2017 with even bigger tire clearance, and it borrowed the future shot front suspension from the company's Roubaix endurance bike, a bike designed to conquer the cobbles of a race it's named after. I actually reviewed this bike at the time, you see my link to that above, and it's a fantastic bike. And I still maintain if comfort is high on your list of priorities when shopping for a new gravel bike, the Diverge is hard to beat. That future shot gives you 20 millimeters of suspension and it really helps to smooth out rough tracks, uh, roots and rocks and gravel. And it's as good as it gets without adding a suspension fork to a gravel bike, which I don't recommend. I've tried them, they're heavy, they're longer and they ruin the geometry on a gravel bike. And so to the brand new 2021 Diverge, Generation 3 Diverge, and it's really a matter of evolution rather than revolution with this new bike. It retains key features, but there are some important improvements to bring it up to date with a rapidly maturing gravel bike market and what you guys expect from a modern gravel bike. Firstly, it takes the updated Future Shock 2.0 from the latest Roubaix. This is a good thing because it's much better. You still have the same 20 millimeters of suspension and it's still hidden underneath the stem in the head tube, but it's got damping so it's much smoother and you now have a dial on the top so you can turn it on and off as you need. So a good upgrade, uh, retains the key feature of the original, but it just works much better. So that's a good thing to see on the latest Diverge. There's now a big compartment in the down tube accessed by a port under the water bottle cage that can be used for everything from tools, the to spare clothing and food. It's called SWAT, and Specialized has been doing it for a number of years on their mountain bikes, and it works really well. Once you've tried it, it's hard to go back to a bike without it because it makes storing all your essentials in that down tube really easy, really neat, and it's always easily accessible. A few manufacturers have copied it, apart from Trek on the latest Damani SLR endurance bike. It's really a shame that other manufacturers haven't adopted it on their road bikes as well. So what the SWAT does, it gives you the full length of the down tube to put whatever you want in there from Haribo to Saurine or tools and clothing. You can put stuff in there yourself or you can use the dedicated SWAT pouches that Specialized provides to keep stuff neat and organized and uh, nice and quiet. Also worth mentioning is that it replaces the previous uh, storage compartment that went in the bottom of the down tube, uh, seat tube junction that had an inner tube and a multi-tool, which worked well, but a lot of people, uh, you guys didn't really like, so they swapped that for the new SWAT down tube storage, which is probably a good thing. Tire clearance is a big debate in the gravel bike market, and it seems bigger is better. The new Diverge now takes a 47 millimeter tire on a 700C wheel, or a 2.1 inch tire on a 650B. So massive tire clearance improvements over the previous Diverge, and puts it in the same category as bikes like the Open Wide, perhaps, or the Fairlight Sea Cam, my own personal bike, which you see a link to above if you want to check that out. To get this bigger tire clearance, there are no drop stays, no race stays like on some other bikes. Instead, it has developed a unique chain stay with a solid beam of carbon fiber that's really narrow between the tire and the chain set, but it's super strong and super stiff, so it maintains the stiffness you need in the rear triangle when you're putting power through the pedals, but maintains the extra tire clearance you need in a tricky area. Geometry on gravel bikes differs from road and cyclocross bikes. The new Diverge has been updated and has been inspired by its epic mountain bikes. So that means it's longer and slacker than what went before. The head angle is more laid back and the reach is longer. And this combines with shorter stems to give the right fit, but with improved handling that a shorter stem provides. On a size 56, which is my size, that means a 13 millimeter longer reach which is quite a big change over the previous bike. But you use it with a short stem, so at 80 and 90 rather than a 110 or 120, and the fit should be perfect, but giving that improved handling from the shorter stem. The fork offset has also been changed, increased by five millimeters, which coupled to a one degree slacker head angle and a whopping 38 millimeter long wheelbase, 
And what you have is a bike that should be a lot more stable at speed and over gravel. Other changes include a bottom bracket that is five millimeters higher for improved pedaling clearance, but the bottom bracket compared to the wheel axles is still low at 80 millimeters. Meanwhile, the chain stays are quite short at 425 millimeters. Some other cool details include rack and mud guard mounts, extra water bottle mounts, and a pair of bolts on the top tube, as is common on gravel bikes these days. So plenty of versatility on this bike. All that and the frame is lighter too a claimed 1,000 grams for a fully painted S-Works Diverge. You're looking at a claimed eight kilograms for a fully built bike, so pretty light for a gravel bike. Oh, and it's aero too. This hasn't been a big focus, and Special doesn't make a big deal about it, but there are subtle aero shaping on the seat stays and fork blades to make it a bit more aero than the old Diverge. Still, it's nowhere near as radical as the aero-focused 3T Explorer, to name one example. That's a brand new Diverge then, but there's also the Diverge Evo. Yes, that's right, a flat bar gravel bike. I'll just let that sink in for a moment. It's not a regular Diverge with a flat bar either. It has actually developed a brand new geometry with a 30 millimeter longer reach, a slacker head angle, and a lower bottom bracket to ensure it handles well with a flat bar compared to a drop bar version. It's only available in three sizes and in alloy only, so it's definitely an experiment. And that's something we've seen from Specialized before and a benefit of being a big company they can afford to throw cash at model. If it flops, not at the end of the world. If it does well, fantastic, they expand it to a bigger range. So it's definitely an experiment to see how it is accepted. Now, the big question is, is it too close to a mountain bike? Would you be better off buying a mountain bike or does it offer something that neither a mountain bike or a diverge with drop bars offers? Well, the only way to find out is to ride it. And hopefully I can get a chance to ride it at some point later in the year. So it'd be fascinating to see how it compares to both a diverge with drop bars and a mountain bike like the Epic Hardtail. So interesting times indeed. No prices for that Diverge Evo yet, but the normal Diverge with drop bars is available in 10 builds, priced from £1,599 up to £8,899 with alloy and carbon options. There's also an S-Works frame set for £3,499. So that in a nutshell is a brand new Specialized Diverge Generation 3 bike, and it looks really good. Not a massive step forward from the previous bike, so definitely an evolution, but bigger tire clearance, which will be appreciated because we all want bigger tires on our gravel bikes. The Future Shock is updated and is much better on the latest Roubaix, so smoother and more controlled, and that dial on the top to turn it on and off is much more useful, especially when you go from gravel and routey tracks to road where you want to be able to turn it on and off as you like. There's also the SWAT storage as well, which is a fantastic feature on their mountain bikes, and I can't see any reason to not like it on the Diverge. So plenty of capacity for putting all your tools and clothing in there, and that for bike packing adventures will be a massive bonus. So plenty of storage options on this bike. It's also a lot more versatile with rack mounts, mud guard mounts, and extra water bottle mounts, so ticking a lot of boxes. A wide range of prices, alloy carbon, a great paint job as well. So it looks good this year. So I can't wait to, uh, to find out how it rides. As you can tell, I haven't ridden it yet. I haven't even seen it in the flesh yet because it's locked down, bike's been delayed. Hopefully later this year, I can get a ride on the bike and see how it compares to the previous diversion. And I have a great gravel bikes in this sector at the moment. But that's all for now. If you've got any questions, put them in the comment section down below. If you enjoyed watching the video, hit that like button. And if you really, really, really enjoyed it, maybe subscribe to my channel for loads more tech reviews coming up soon. But that's all for now. Stay safe, keep pedaling. I'll see you again soon.